Good evening YouTube, welcome to my channel. My name is MP and tonight I'd like to talk to you about Memoirs of a Polar Bear, a book by Japanese-German writer Yoko Tawada. This is a book that was originally published in German back in 2014 under the title Etuden im Schnee, which we could literally translate as Snow Studies. A little bit of information about uh, Tabada first. She was born in 1960 in Tokyo. She initially studied Russian literature, and then she moved to Hamburg uh, to pursue uh, studies in German literature at university. She went on to Zurich to get a PhD in German literature, and she has been living in Berlin since 2006. She writes books either in German or Japanese, and she writes extensively all sorts of books. She's published novels, plays, uh, poetry, short stories, uh, essays, you name it. And she is described as uh, someone who likes to play with the limits of language as well as uh, the perspective of an outsider. And this is something that you definitely get in this book, Memoirs of a Polar Bear. Uh, so the book is divided in three sections, and it follows the story of a uh, polar bear family uh, living, working, having relationships uh, in human society. Uh, the first part of the book is, uh, we'll say, about the grandmother bear. She's not named in the book, so I will call her the grandmother. The second part of the book is uh, about Tosca, so the daughter of the grandmother, and the third part of the book is about Tosca's son, who is called Knut. Uh, so the grandmother, she uh, is a circus performer in the USSR, who, uh, following an injury, she can no longer perform in the circus, so she's given a desk job. Uh, and then she attends conferences uh, where they discuss various subjects. And while traveling on one of these conferences, she gets to writing in her hotel room, and she ends up writing her autobiography. It gets published, uh, it becomes very popular, she becomes a best-selling author, uh, she's even translated uh, into German from the Russian, and then a group of uh, people living in West Berlin organize uh, her exile from the USSR into uh, West Berlin for her safety so that she can keep writing her life story. So she continues writing her story in Berlin, and while exploring the city, she uh, sees posters, she discovers uh, this country called Canada, and when she asks about Canada, uh, it's described to her as a place that is very cold. And so she decides that she wants to emigrate there because Berlin isn't cold enough for her. And the last uh, part of her section of the book is actually her imagining uh, what her life would be like if she were to emigrate to Canada. So learning another new language, uh, meeting a partner, uh, getting married and having children. And uh, that's how her section ends. And you can almost imagine that this book right here is the actual result of uh, the grandmother bear having written the book. And one of the questions that I asked myself uh, concerning the other two parts of the book is, well, are those two parts also imagined by the grandmother bear? Or are they really written from the point of view of Tosca and Knut? Anyways, uh, moving on to the second uh, part of the book, which is also the longest story in the book. Uh, so about Tosca, the polar bear, uh, who studied to be a ballerina but who struggles to find work because she doesn't have the delicate physique that casting directors are looking for in a ballerina. And so she doesn't get to play in um, the Swan Lake production. And she's disappointed by that. And she ends up working in a circus where she meets Barbara, who is an animal trainer. And so they work together on this act that they want to debut at the circus. And the second part of the book is initially told by Barbara telling the story of Tosca, uh, but towards the end of it I got confused and then I realized that it was now Tosca telling the story of Barbara telling the story of Tosca. So there was a little bit of uh, running around uh, and it was a bit confusing, but when I reread the book uh, I was able to follow, to see where they were going with this and to dis to distinguish who was the bear writing and who, when it was uh, Barbara writing. 
And then the third part of the book uh, I know was based uh, on a real life polar bear who is called Knut. He was born in captivity at the Berlin Zoo. Maybe you've heard about him before. Uh, he was born in December 2006 and uh, he was abandoned by his mother who is also actually named Tosca and who in uh, the real world was also a former circus performer. So he was abandoned, uh, he and his brother, his brother died, uh, but the zookeepers were able to save him and they nurtured him and then uh, he made his first public appearance in the zoo in the spring of 2007 and this was probably the height of uh, Knut mania. Knut was everywhere. Uh, lots of people had sympathy for him because of this story that he had been abandoned by his mother. Uh, it was also a huge success for the Berlin Zoo because he was the first uh, polar bear cub to be born and survive in captivity in over 30 years. And there had been some controversy in Germany uh, by, I think, an animal activist who had mentioned that uh, Knut should not be raised uh, by humans, that he should not have been saved by the zoo and that he should have been left to die, uh, which brought a lot more sympathy to Knut's cause. And there you go, spring 2007, Knut Media, tons of visitors uh, go through the Berlin Zoo, including myself, because I did go to Berlin uh, in May 2007 and I really wanted to see cute, cuddly uh, Knut, and I did. Um, so this last part of the book tells uh, the story of his life in the zoo from his point of view, uh, from the moment that he is aware that he's being taken care of by uh, Dörflein, by his zookeeper, uh, all the way until uh, the end of his friend uh, Michael towards the end of the book. And so this part was true. The first part of the book with the grandmother bear I knew that wasn't based on an actual bear who had become a writer in the USSR. And so I also assumed that the second part of the book wasn't based on uh, reality. And then I made some research about the book and to my uh, surprise and astonishment I realized that actually Barbara, the bear, polar bear trainer in the book, is based on a real life person who is known as uh, Ursula Böttcher. She was born in Eastern Germany. She worked with several zoos in Eastern Germany and then touring Eastern Europe and also the United States with her polar bears, yes, plural. And to this day, she remains the only woman uh, who has worked as an animal uh, trainer in circuses with polar bears. And her life story is quite extraordinary. And I will say it took, to me, it took a lot of guts uh, to decide to work with polar bears in a circus. I found some pictures of herself online. I will link the references down below. So this is her with her favorite bear who is called Alaska. And the number that is described in the book, The Kiss of Death, is a number that she actually did in real life uh, with this polar bear. The difference being that instead of a sugar cube, she would place a piece of meat in her mouth and then the bear would uh, bend down to take the piece of meat from her mouth, mimicking a kiss in between them. And that number was a huge success. Uh, she worked with bears for about 40 years uh, until her retirement and she passed away a few years ago back in 2010. So I was absolutely stunned to learn that the second part of the book, which seemed so unreal, was actually very real. And I thought it was an interesting transition of the author to go from a fictional story to a story that people maybe knew uh, was based on reality and having a story in the middle that could both be perceived as uh, fully fiction or also based on reality. Uh, and I'd like to end this video. Uh, there would be a lot more to say about the book. I haven't spoken about uh, the use of language in the book. Uh, there are references to other works with uh, anthropomorphized animals in this work, especially in the first part. Uh, I haven't spoken about exile, about migration, about identity, but these are all themes that she covers in this book, again, with polar bears uh, evolving in a human society. 
uh, but I want to finish with something that I found curious, uh, and that's in the last part of the book with the character called Michael, uh, or Michael, if we want to use his English pronunciation, uh, because he's the only character who's introduced and who we don't really have uh, a title or a description for. Based on what is said in the book, uh, he's a celebrity. He's, um, he's someone who's followed by paparazzis. Uh, Knut meets him at a distinguished birthday party for this person. He's also described as having a voice of honey. Um, he talks about uh, being a musician, being pushed into music with his brothers at a very young age by his father. And uh, what sealed the deal for my theory was when uh, in one of his visits to Knut in the zoo, he asks him if he has ever walked on the moon. Now, who do we know that is called Michael, uh, that is known for moonwalking? That would be Michael Jackson. What would Michael Jackson be doing in a book about polar bears? I have no idea, but that's my theory. That's who I think this Michael is. And the real life chronology of uh, the events of Knut's life, his uh, zookeeper, as well as Michael Jackson's life, uh, they parallel what is being described in the book in the sense that Knut is introduced to the zoo in the spring of 2007. His uh, keeper, uh, Thomas Dufflein, he died in September 2008. And Michael Jackson, in real life, he died in June 2009. And that follows the chronology of events that we get in this book. So that's my theory. I would be curious to hear your thoughts about this book if you've read it, uh, if you have your own theories as to who this Michael is, or if you have other themes uh, that I didn't bring up in this video that you would like to talk about, you can leave them in the comments below. Overall, I have to say I quite enjoyed this read. Uh, I would describe it as a modern fairy tale. There are also references to fairy tales in the books, in the book, uh, so I think that's fitting and I think the author wanted maybe to uh, insert this book uh, in this tradition of uh, fairy tales. Um, I look forward to reading more works from this author. She has other works translated into either English or French. And uh, there's a work of hers that I would really like to read in German, uh, which uh, the translated title would be uh, Adventures in German Grammar Poetry. So it's a book of poetry based on German grammar. So that seems really curious to me, and I would be uh, intrigued uh, in reading what kind of poetry you can make based on German grammar. So if you've made it this far in my video, thank you for watching. Uh, I will see you next time in my next video, and I wish you a very nice evening. Bye!